The new Chancellor, Rachel Reeves, is under pressure to change the rules when it comes to ISA, Individual Savings Account. So I thought it might be useful to quickly put up a video to look at what has been said and what could actually happen with ISAs. Now, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that the previous Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, introduced a lot of changes to ISA and you have the video on the screen that talks about what those changes would be and now there might be new changes while we still don't know the fate of those old announcements but without any much ado let's go through that report and see what these changes might be the new chancellor is facing calls to boost investment opportunities for millions by altering the regulations surrounding individual savings accounts ISAs. the current annual investment limits for this tax-free savings an investment account stand at £20,000 and they are increasing demands for the Chancellor Rachel Reeves to raise the cap by an additional £5,000. So that's the first point. Now let's break that down a little bit. Now just a quick reminder, ISA stands for Individual Savings Account and this account allow you to save or invest up to £20,000 each tax year to go completely tax-free. Now, looking back at the report, the truth is this increase would be good news for some, but won't mean much for a lot of British people. Now, ask yourself, how many people do you think use up their yearly ISA allowance of £20,000? According to a report by AJ Bell, roughly 7% of all ISA holders use their full allowance. But it gets worse because 21.8% or 5 million ISA holders paid in £2,500 or less. So does it really move the needle for the majority? The answer is no. But it's still a positive for the very few that actually use up their ISA allowance. This is an additional incentive to save and invest more of their income. And if you're in this category, please, please, please take advantage of this if it actually comes to light. But it's not the first time we have heard about an increase. In fact, the past government hunt had a proposal for a £5,000 increase on what they call the British ISA. And this ISA simply means to invest only in the UK market. And we'll touch more about that later. The last we heard about this new British ISA account is that it's still in consultation. But with the new government tearing up its predecessor's proposals and most especially with these new changes that we are hearing, we are not even sure if the British ISA will go ahead. In fact, it might not even see the light of day. But before we analyze further, let's just continue reading what the report says. Labour has hinted at significant changes to the operations of the ISA with plans to simplify the rules in an effort to encourage more substantial investments from everyday individuals. This could potentially unlock tens of billions of pounds, over 30 billion pounds, for investment in British businesses, therefore stimulating economic growth. The party is considering merging cash ISAs, stocks and shares ISAs, junior ISAs and innovative finance ISAs into a single one ISA product. Now this is welcome change that would actually help a lot of people understand the ISA product. I can't count how many people have reached out to me to explain ISAs maybe because they want to buy a house and they've heard that there is an ISA that is useful and things like that. You know, people want to know which one should they use. People don't want to make mistakes and all of that. And I believe that this move is a very positive one. I believe that this move makes it simple, stupid, which is what we are all about in this channel. So instead of four to five accounts and as a result, making it more complex, you have just one account and as the report says it will make it easier for those with money in cash ISAs to easily transition towards the long-term investing in stocks and shares and other products without having to open a new account this makes sense seeing that more people use cash ISA than stocks and shares ISA 
And I think some of the reason for this is the fact that people don't understand how investing works. So it's safer to keep their money in cash, which is what they understand. And if you're watching this video and this is you, you don't understand how investing works and investing is a big deal to you. We have an investing playlist. In fact, our most watched video is actually investing made easy, the beginning and the basics of investing where we break down everything that you need to know to give you confidence to make that very first steps when it comes to investing so please please binge that playlist is made very simple for us it's also on the screen and it will be in the description and also share the video with as many people and comment below what you want us to talk about next on that series and please also don't forget to subscribe if you have not and hit the like button while you're at it so it helps people to actually see this video another reason why this is a welcome development is the fact that this can be done with limited cost and if you've watched this channel for a while you know that my philosophy is to invest in cheap low cost index funds just imagine from the provider's point of view the logistic nightmare to actually create and manage a whole new system a new account british isa for example because they have to make sure that only qualified companies are actually provided in these accounts and have to constantly monitor and trust me the cost of all that with not charity work it will be passed down to the customer to you and to me so it's simplified product that will be cheap is far better than multiple products and accounts that come with higher costs another suggestion from the big corporation is that eliminating stamp duty on uk investments would incentivize investments in uk assets while i don't think this would move the needle because the real issue with the uk is simply that other countries provide investments with a better rate of return so in my opinion i don't see how that would change but if they want to see real change they need to do more to support british businesses british businesses need to be up there just take a look at china what they did in a few years we have byd as the third largest company car company in the world and Brits have the capacity to do a lot more than that you can't have that without the ripple effects in the economy so let me know in the comments what you think about this change and any more changes that you would like the government to implement. If you would like to know more about ISAs and investing, watch this video next.